I gave in all the time. I, I, I ran from, you know, uh, uh, bad situations. Um, I, I, my relationships were horrible because I didn't put in the work and the work was, I needed to do was on myself, but it was always, you know, I always blamed everything, you know, blame, you know, it was always in my head. There was, there was something, somebody else. And then just, just the way I lived and, the only way that I can stay on track is to be constantly doing things that are hard, that test me, and reading, the, absorbing the content, and just to keep my head right. And sometimes yeah. that can take three to six hours when I get up in the mornings. You know, uh, I you know I don't stop until my head gets right because I'm no I'm no good to anybody. Uh, much less myself if I'm not in a good frame of mind. Hey, this is a quick shout out from one of our awesome sponsors. Check this out. Coffee, bacon, tobacco, pine trees. Is there anything that smells better? Believe it or not, there is, and it's a fresh leather holster. If you stop by craftholsters.com, you'll open the door to a safe and comfortable carry, not only for yourself, but your entire family. Look, they've got holsters for both concealed, open carry, semi-autos, revolvers, righties, and of course, they have some holsters for you too, lefties. And all of that at a reasonable price. you got to go check them out at craftholsters.com. <laughs> Scott, you're a father, nomad, hiker, explorer. You're the founder of You Can Outdoors, who has around a million followers combined between your TikTok and Instagram accounts, where you share amazing friendly reminder videos. I love them so much, man. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Let's go. I, I love to kick things off by going back a bit. Like, where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you? So, <laughs> I'm uh, from the Dallas area. I'm a Texas boy. Okay. Um, that's where I grew up. Uh, so, my, uh, my parents... Uh, are both Texas people too. And my mom is from West Texas. My dad is a little town in central Texas, but um, they were only married till I was like seven years old. I had a very, from age zero to seven, um, it was, was quite a traumatic time in my life. I, I had to deal with my dad who was a very violent uh, alcoholic um, mm. and I was his target. So, um, and of course my mom was too. I had a sister, but but she wasn't too uh, affected by the, the physical and his, his actual attention. But anyways, so, I mean, I grew up through that. I learned at uh, a very early age to have a very large repertoire of survival skills. So, um, and anyways, my mom divorced my dad when uh, I was seven. She went on to become a, a uh, psychologist. So she, I grew up in a home with her watching her go back to school, get her bachelor's, master's, and her, her uh, doctorate, and, um, and practice out of the house. This is all done in the 70s. And so it was, it was extremely amazing, but also very inappropriate and dysfunctional in a lot of ways. Sure. That she did things. She was a great therapist, but she didn't have, really have any ethics. So there was a, a little bit of that going on. But, and I kind of... Uh, followed that a little bit. My, uh, uh, when I got out of high school, I did all kinds of things, but I uh, got into psychology too. And I ended up being an administrator for an adolescent residential treatment center for quite a while. Wow. And which I love to do, but it was very, uh, that was, <laughs> it was very traumatic with what you're having to deal with. So, sure. but again, that, that's kind of what my childhood, it was, I, I tried to translate and bring those survival skills into adulthood and um, that didn't work very well. So okay. My, my adulthood was, and my, as an adult and my relationships and business and everything was a, a huge uh, success and then crash and burn and self-sabotage and, and trying to uh, navigate with uh, skills that just didn't apply to, mm. that, uh, to uh, adult, adult life and making decisions. So, you know, and that's, uh, that's really what kind of led me to this point at a late point in my life. So anyways. Yeah. Oh, it's such a tough uh, childhood too. I mean, I grew up in that same sort of violent environment as a child as well, not from my dad, but from my mom's boyfriend and, and actually ended up having to fight him when I was 13. It was pretty crazy, but uh, you know, the alcoholism and I totally understand that for sure. You had mentioned that outdoors really saved your life. When did you realize that you loved being outdoors and was there someone that kind of motivated you to spend more time outside? 
Well, you know, so I'm 61. So first, you know, and, and coming from where I come from in Texas, and I mean, we, we always, we never, that I can ever remember, really lived right in the city. You know, North Dallas back then was, uh, was, was out there, you know, the, the, I don't know if you know much about the area. The, one of the biggest highways that's there now used to be railroad tracks. Okay. We lived behind there. But, but I, I grew up, you know, running around as a kid, you know, just, uh, it was, and, and I, I, I was, you know, people talk about, oh, when we, you know, when we were kids and, you know, baby boomers, you know, we were, our parents kicked us out and said, we'll see you at dark. You know, I couldn't wait to get out of my house. And I, and I couldn't, I didn't want to go home. And so, you know, but it, cause, cause there was a lot of the outdoors that was involved in that, but it was, it was safer for me then, mm -hmm. but that just kind of wasn't any big part of my life. Uh, later on, you know, fished a little bit, did some things, but, um, you know, camped and here and there, but it wasn't until I had basically, there came a point in my life after my second divorce, which was about 12 years ago now. So about 10 years ago, and my boys came with me. They were 13 and 15 at that time. And there was just a bunch of, it was a mess. But mm. we, you know, we did, we did the best we could. And, and uh, you know, we, the, you know, that, that worked out okay. But um, through that, you know, I, it was really hard. Everything got really tough on me because I loved being dad. I mm. mean, I, would, I loved being, you know, uh, you know, Indian guides and, Cub Scouts and T-ball and, and all their sports and traveled with my oldest son with golf for years and just all, all this. I just loved making their lunches and just, I mean, I just, you know, everything I didn't have. Everything yeah. I just, you know, it, it was, uh, so I loved that. And that was part of, after the divorce and the boys getting a little bit older, getting close to graduating and leaving and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, I was getting into really bad place with where, I was that because I was I, I kept losing my identity through 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 my life and didn't have any self worth and just didn't have any and so I I to, to try to move this really quick I got to a point where I just gave up mm. I basically had resigned I even said it out loud to my sons I said guys I'm done I said, it wasn't like I was going to go find somewhere to jump off a building or a mountain I was I was done with just trying. With just, and I was very competitive and ambitious through a lot of things, but I just, I just didn't want to do anymore. I was tired. I was exhausted. I was just, you know, this life I had led and all this, this collateral damage that I created, just everything. I was just beat myself up. There was nothing I was feeling good about. It just had gotten to a point. I'm done. I wake up every morning. If I'm working, I'll go to work. If I'm not, I'll do whatever. And I, and I go home and I'll go to bed and I'll wake up in the morning and do, this, do it again until I die. So I don't know what happened. It was shortly thereafter. It was a few months thereafter, but I went to uh, uh, Lake Texoma, which is on the, the uh, border of uh, Texas and Oklahoma. It's a very big lake, uh, okay. body of water. And they have some trails out there. And I don't know how I ended up out there exactly. It's about an hour from the Dallas area. But so I was driving around and of course, Staying in my victimhood and 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 just going through that, and I ended up stopping out at the lake, and it was close to a trailhead, and I was like, hmm, you know, and I saw this movement, this, this trail going into the woods or what woods we have here, and um, I just started walking, and I I can't remember. I, people ask me this all the time. I didn't have my I either. I didn't have. I can't remember some some specifics, but I either didn't have my phone with me. Or I just wasn't paying attention, it was off or whatever. But I just didn't care. I, yeah. At that point, this was right about almost 10 years ago, 19 years ago. And so I was just, and I just started walking. And I don't remember how long it was, but it was hours. It had gotten dark. Um, I was, I was, my, my, everything, all the noise was shut off. You know, the only thing I was hearing was what was around me, the water, the you know, birds, uh, myself walking. Um, that was, that was the, the noises that were in there, all of the other city stuff and all the stuff we deal with every day that, that clogs, you know, any kind of process of, of, of working through things. Uh, anyways, so it got really loud and it got, uh, overwhelmingly loud a lot and it got, uh, so I was an emotional roller coaster out there. I just didn't, I just, I even went further deeper into not caring. 
But then the I started kind of hearing things. It wasn't so much chatter and so much of the you know crushing verbals of you know how much I sucked. Um, mm. you know, all the messages that you know I always just kept reinforcing as I got to be an adult. But it I, I just got to a place where I was like this. I was kind of amazed, um, and and I now. Trust me, it was hard. I mean, and as you going through any of this kind of stuff, you know, especially when you're starting to maybe even get a peek of of this direction, you're. You, and sometimes, like me, it wasn't really expected at that time. But anyways, after that, I just I started kind of. I felt a little bit off of me, you know. I think a lot of stuff just kind of it had somewhere to go, and I was mm-hmm. able to to understand a little bit more and, and I was able to think about it the next few days and things like that. But my point is I didn't stop it. So I went and I, uh, I went out um, and, and I had always been kind of a jogger and a runner and I had always done some movement, but I just started going on trails and I started going out there for a couple of months and, and then I just, I just couldn't stop. I just, mm-hmm. and I started journaling and, you know, I started dabbling in some things and, and it, um, you know, it was a big process getting where I am now, trust me, which is not over, but moving from that point to to really doing so much work. Um, but I, I, look, it was either that or what I was feeling is at least, I, I think what registered with me is, is I got into a place, I started to understand. Mm. I started to get a, you know, this is gonna, this is kind of giving me a little bit of what I had just keep kept suppressing, you know, when, yep. when, when, I, when I was getting angry or I was thinking about my dad or I was doing whatever out there, I could really feel it. And instead of just being in my truck and, 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 and driving in traffic and getting triggered somehow with something I read or heard or somebody I just talked to on the phone and got angry, I didn't know what was behind it. You know, I was just, yep. just an angry idiot. Like everybody's told you. You know, sure. I could when I was started getting angry or something got triggered. I started getting clues as to what where it came from. I knew, I knew, you know. Look, I could have held my hat on. I'm a poor, abused child, but um, I just didn't want to. I used that as a my own excuse to myself. So much. Sure. Yeah. You know, well, this is what's wrong. I mean, here's the deal. I'm broken. You know, even though psychology wise, I had all the information in the world from getting it. My mom, you know, from watching my mom to then getting into myself, I just couldn't get that in, in, in my mind and true. So I'm not sure exactly where this started, but that's where I got in the outdoors, and that's and now that's why I immerse myself in it. That's why I live in it. That's why I go on, you know, hike for 94 days for 1,400 miles. That's why I just do these things because I want to go hurt myself. And I mean, when I mean people take that wrong, you know, I want to do hard things. I want to yep. break myself down. Because it really tests, that's what tests you, not only physically, but mentally. You mm-hmm. know, how am I going to handle this? You know, when, you, when you're stuck in a situation or you're, you miscalculate where you're at and you're, you know, you know, those are things, you know, um, that's, that's what I seek in my life these days. In the outdoors and hiking, public lands, all those things are all, um, that all ties in together. So that's, Probably a little bit of a longer answer, but it, it's still probably very short into what it really means to me. Yeah, no, that's so good. And I, I, I'm a big fan of pushing yourself mentally. And, and you did this Appalachian Trail, 1,400 miles or 1,400 plus miles, 94 days. Uh, I, I think you said you had gotten injured you put on your foot, but you pushed through that pain for quite a bit there. Why did you decide to go on that journey? And, and on that 94 days, what was the most memorable experience for you? Well, you, you know, that, those are great. Yeah, so... So for me, the Appalachian Trail was purely about, and, and 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 I talked about that from the beginning and everything. And people, well, why are you doing that, or why would you do that, or this, that, and the other? And, and I said, because it's hard. It's going to be yes. hard. Now, I didn't expect it to be as hard as it was, but I had never done anything at that level or that distance or uh, that time frame before. But uh, um, so. It, it, getting injured, you know, just to clarify that, yes, it, you know, I, I've done this, and it's something I've been, <laughs> especially my oldest son, it's, these are behaviors, these are things that sometimes you wish you weren't 
you didn't exhibit some of these things because what I've had to do is work to dial back a little bit. I mean, as much yeah. as I want to go out and, you know, uh, really, really test myself, I do have a high pain threshold. Um, sure. And I don't, I don't, you know, I just usually don't stop. And Because I really want people to understand that I'm not an advocate of putting yourself in danger, hmm. things like that. But I do yep. subscribe to uh, uh, Cameron Haynes guys, uh, David Goggins guys, and Jocko Willett, all those guys that, you know, just put the up tape on and tape it up, go, you know, just, you know, and that's real for them. It's mm -hmm. not so, uh, and, and so my point is, my getting injured was taping some things up on my toes and feet and, and, and walking for days and, 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 it, and walking a couple hundred miles before it finally the pain was so much. And the pain was so much is because my toe got infected and then it infected my foot. Gotcha. And I had, I had a deep ulcer in my toe that went all the way down to the tendon and the bone. Hmm. Now, that is, I don't hang my hat on that. I'm not encouraging that. But <laughs> that's what, what happened and that's what I did. And, yeah. Um, so, the, but that was, you know what, that's part of why I did that because now I'm, I, I, I did hit a, 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 uh, a threshold that I wasn't able to, at that time, push through. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not, and, and again, it woke me up again to the fact of I have to be careful and dial back how, how assertive I am with my self care and everything that I do because I put so much pressure and I, can put myself, you know, the last couple of years, because I was dumb and, and overdid it, um, you know, I, I fell, I uh, dropped 15 feet off of a trail because I was doing something stupid. And I tore the meniscus in my right knee, sprained the left, separated my shoulder. And I'm out in the middle of uh, the Arizona desert and there's nobody around. Yeah. You know, when I got all the rangers, the rangers said, well, are, are, is this life or death? And I'm like, I said, well, it's not life or death, but do you have some water? I said, do at the moment. He said, well, just see what you can do because we're too busy. Oh, uh, gosh. So these are, and then it wasn't uh, nine months later, I tried to jump over a river in Colorado, and it was the dumbest thing in the world, and grabbed hold, and the current took me, and then I, the way I jerked a certain way, and I told, tore the uh, inner lining of my chest wall. Wow. So, again, when you do as much as I do solo, it's it's – it's not real. You, so I, I've had to, these are things that I've had to dial back on through this whole process because it's, it's been amazing to have this kind of an attitude and mental and mindset to, for the, for the, uh, you know, the mental health stuff and, and pushing through and having that. It's not good. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're overdoing it, but to get back to your other question, I think was, you know, the people were probably the most amazing thing on the, on the Appalachian Trail. They were. Hmm. Yeah. Look, I've already seen a lot of scenery. You know, I was the guy that, you know, I, I wasn't interested in walking a mile and a half off trail to see, you know, McAfee's knob or something. <laughs> you know, I, if I want to go do that, I'll go do that and go look. I, but I've seen great sceneries and like that. So I was there for the trip. And so yeah. that was my motivation and was moving through. But the, the people out there, the, the, uh, from some of the vendor, uh, the uh, outfitters, you know, that, that were there to, uh, that I worked with a little bit on and, and to all of the uh, people at the hostels and, you know, things like that. I mean, that support the hikers and support that community. Yeah. Um, those kind of people were amazing. Hmm. And when you, when you've done what I've done over these last years to where you, you, you don't really insert yourself, you know, I've, I've done mostly things that have been very self driven and by myself and things like that. So uh, to be kind of open and be around people a little bit more and get in those environments, um, you know, you, you know, some of the, the, the faith I had lost in some people had changed. I still feel like um, there's a lot of things off track out there that, um, that, um, that, that perpetrate and, or, or uh, facilitate uh, being, giving in and being soft and just a lot of things that I don't feel, they don't serve me well. They've never served me well. None, yep. Nothing I've yep. ever done. So these are realizations. I know I get off track. I'm a little 80. No, that's good. I love you know, this. It leads, it leads, that's, those are the things when, what, what it does for me, it leads me into understanding more about myself, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to 
you know, what else is there and where exactly and how do I exactly think? And, and, it, and, it, and it does lead, lead back to, um, you know, with the ways I don't, I don't want to be that, that in, in doing it the way now, it just reinforces the way I think now. And, and I mean, I feel very bulletproof. I'm certainly not perfect. And there's certainly things I have to keep the, the, the holes, in the, you know, they're there. I have to keep, you know, working on, but, um, I just, I gave in all the time. I, I, I ran from, you know, uh, uh, bad situations. Um, I, I, my relationships were horrible because I didn't put in the work and the work was, I needed to do was on myself, but it was always, you know, I always blamed everything, you know, blame, you know, it was always in my head. There was, there was something, somebody else. And then just, just the way I live. And the only way that I can stay on track is to be constantly doing things that are hard that test me and reading, absorbing the content and just to keep my head right. And sometimes yeah. that can take three to six hours when I get up in the mornings, you know, uh, I, you know, I don't stop until my head gets right because I'm no, I'm no good to anybody, uh, much less myself. If I'm not in a good frame of mind and I, because, because when I wake up is when my demons are, they're wake, you know, they're, they've already positioned themselves. They've readjusted, you know, from the, uh, the early yesterday's kills of them and now <laughs> yep. they're back awake and they're, and as soon as I wake up, that's my most anxiety filled time because I lived such a anxiety filled life and I was always, I hated the next day coming. Because mm. I had to work, clean things up, to hide things, to lie on top of another lie, do all of this stuff. That was all that stuff we talked about from being a kid and the survival stuff, you know. And you know, again, it serves you well to stay alive back then as a kid, but you can't live your life that way. Yeah, so good. I, I love that. Thank you for sharing all that. I think it's awesome. You mentioned in one of your posts a while back, it's that you said the two hardest things in life is finding yourself. And after that, accepting what you find, what was that experience like for you? Well, it was, it was really hard, it, you know, and, and, it, and I think that's, what's really tough for people. Um, and I, and, and I think that's, that's if people would break through that more and then start sharing their story. People don't share their story and they can't share their story accurately if they're not willing to drop their pants and bear their ass. Yep. And I'm not saying everybody should. And I always tell people, look, I'm always encouraging them, please share your story. It's so effective how you can touch somebody, even if you're in the middle of what you're doing to try to move past something. And, um, but, but once it gets, again, I went through that. Look, once it gets harder, once you realize, oh my God, I really think this way. I really, I really did that. I really manipulated that. The person that was at that time the closest to me that I love the most, but you, you, because it was so excused in that those times and because whatever you, you keep it suppressed with everything else. And but once you start going hard, that's why I tell people go outside, mm. get on a trail. That's where it gets quiet. And you're going to have to stay in that. What is it? David Goggins says something that was really amazing. He said, look, when, when things get tough and, and, and you're and things are just going wrong and, and you're in and, and whatever's going on in your head and, and the things you're thinking of and what you're talking about, that's you. That's you. Yep. Now, can you stay in that? Can you stay in that mindset and can you, can you go to work on it mm. and can you make the changes? Can you, can you stop the behavior? Can you do the things you need to do to move past it? And you know, that's, th those were the hard things. So, it, it, uh, of, and again, you can have breakthroughs until I was able to get to that point and go, Hey, I, yeah, I did that. I always tell everybody, look, you ain't got nothing on me. You ain't done anything worse than me. You ain't been through anything worse than me. And, that, and I, I don't mean that to be true. Look, there's always bigger, bigger things that are some really things that have happened, but other sure. people, things like that. But there, you don't you just don't have anything. I mean, I don't talk about anything I don't know. And 
or I haven't done, have been there, or are doing. And I always tell people that day, stop listening to people. They have been there, done that, or doing it. You need to just walk away. Right. Walk away when the advice starts coming because it doesn't serve you. I wanted to ask, we have a few minutes left. What's up? What's next on the horizon for you? Like uh, what, what are you most excited about right now? Okay. So like I said, I kind of talked about the beginning. So I'm, I'm going to be, I've made a commitment. So starting in December, I'm going to be out, back out, out, out on the road for two years. Okay. So I'm, I'm doing some retro on my truck. You know, I did all, a lot of overlanding and stuff too. I go on mesh forest lands. That's, you know, where I go further back and hot, try to hike and be alone, you know, and, and you know, get on. That's why I'm huge public lands, public trails, parks. You know, that's that's all part of my uh, my stuff. But you know, my camper's being built. I'm, I'm working on my truck myself a little bit over the next couple of months, and 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 I'm really excited to finish my book, which should be finished by the end of November, which will be out next year. But uh, that going back out, committing for two more years um, on the road is I'm very excited about that because I I built such a big community now and there's so many opportunities and so many things to where before it was just, you know, where, you know, the great thing about it is you get up and go wherever you want. You know, yep. I, I, I'm not a planner. I'm not like making reservations here and I don't stay in parks and public, you know, RV parks or stuff like that. Again, I have my truck and I have this really cool camper. I can't wait to show everybody. So that's just going to kind of fold into it. And I'm hoping to just keep expanding this message uh, the, it's just not the friendly reminder, self-care, savage up and just yep. everything around that and the outdoors and how it all ties in. And I'm going to be back in it living, you know, people watched me on the Appalachian Trail for that period of time. Um, it really resonated with so many new people and it just keeps us. So I just want to keep broadening this message as, as far as I can because of uh, the feedback I get. I, I the comments that I get and, and the DMs and it's hundreds a day and it's, it's, you know, for what I'm doing for myself, how it's resonating to change other people's lives. I just, uh, I, you know, I, I owe it to, mm. to take this thing as far as not just for me, but anybody that has gotten anything from it still gets anything from it or will get anything from it. It's I, I owe that. And so I'm excited about uh, that. Come on. Scott, you're an absolute world changer, man. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I'm so excited for your next journey, man. And, and just while you're getting prepped up for that, your new trailer camper, man, I'm, I'm excited to see what that looks like, man. And just know that you are changing lives through your message every single day, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, sir. Thanks for having me. Thanks for what you're doing. And I appreciate it. And I did read up on you too. So I did have a lot of information about where you come from and all that. So I know you get a lot of what I'm saying. So. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to take a listen or watch. It's truly an honor to be able to speak with such amazing guests. And I hope that they've made an impact on your life in some way, shape, or form. And you can do me one big favor. That would be huge. Click that subscribe button. And then second favor, hit that share button. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate you. Keep changing the world. I believe in you.